everybody. What's happening? So, wow, all right. I've never been introduced by my mom before. That was great. <laughs> so I, uh, I'm working right now over in uh, Vancouver on the other side of North America, which is why my head is shaved. Um, and I flew overnight last night and uh, got into New York a couple hours ago and, uh, and, and changed planes and came down here because I really had to tell you all in person that I think you are awesome. So I was raised by a teacher who you just met. And uh, my mom was a professor of early childhood education. And, and from the time I was in kindergarten, as she said, all the way through my high school graduation, I attended public schools. And I would not trade that education or that experience for anything. I had incredible teachers. And as I look at my life today, uh, the things that I value the most about myself, my imagination, my love of acting, my passion for writing, my love of learning, my curiosity, all of these things came from the way that I was parented and taught. And none of these qualities that I just mentioned, none of these qualities that I prize so deeply, none of these qualities that have brought me so much joy, that have made me so successful professionally even, none of these qualities that make me who I am can be tested. Now I said before that I had incredible teachers and that's true. But it's more than that. My teachers were empowered to teach me. Yeah. Their time was not taken up with a bunch of silly test prep, a bunch of drill and kill nonsense that any serious person knows doesn't promote real learning. No, my teachers were free to approach me and every other kid in that classroom like an individual puzzle. They took so much care in figuring out who we were and how, how to best make the lessons resonate with each of us. They were, they were empowered to unlock our potential. In other words, they were allowed to be teachers. Now, don't, don't get me wrong, I, I did have a brush with uh, standardized tests at one point. Um, I remember because my mom went to the principal's office and said, my kid ain't taking that. Actually, I have it in quotes because she said, it's stupid, it won't tell you anything, and it'll just make him nervous. I guess it was the late 70s. I guess we could get away with it back then. Well, I shudder to think that these tests are being used today to control where funding goes. I don't know where I would be today if my teacher's job security was based on how I performed on some standardized test. If their very survival as teachers was based not on whether I actually fell in love with the process of learning, but rather if I could fill in the right bubble on a test. If they had to spend most of their time desperately drilling us and less time encouraging creativity and original ideas, less time knowing who we were, seeing our strengths and helping us realize realize our talents. I honestly don't know where I would be today if that was the type of education I had. I sure as hell wouldn't be here. I do know that. Okay, this has been a horrible decade for teachers. And I can't imagine how demoralized you guys must feel. But I came here today to deliver an important message to you, and I really hope you can hear it. As I get older, I appreciate more and more the teachers that I had growing up. And I'm not alone. There are millions of people just like me. So the next time you're feeling down or exhausted or unappreciated or at the end of your rope, the next time you turn on the TV and see yourself being called overpaid, <laughs> 
The next time you encounter some simple-minded, punitive policy that's been driven into your life by some corporate reformer who has literally never taught anyone anything. Please, please, please know that there are millions of us behind you. You have an army of regular people standing right behind you, and our appreciation for what you do is so deeply felt. We love you, we thank you, and we will always have your back.